Good morning on this spotty Monday. The New York Times, as part of a new project called Overlooked, has published obituaries for 15 extraordinary women who were not given one at the time of their deaths. Among the first group of women are a few whose remarkable accomplishments took place here in New York. Diane Arbus, a photographer, grew up in luxurious uptown apartments but she sought inspiration among the city's outcasts and eccentrics. Her photographs like a Jewish giant at home with his parents, in the Bronx, N.Y., 1970, a young man in curlers at home on West 20th Street, N.Y.C., and girl with a cigar in Washington Square Park, N.Y.C. are debated among photographers as both sublime and exploitative. She influenced generations of photographers and artists including Stanley Kubrick, who adapted her image of twins in his film The Shining. The transgender pioneer, prostitute, and drag queen Marsha P. Johnson moved to New York with $15 and a bag of clothes, where she created her alternate persona, Black Marsha. She played important roles in the gay liberation movement and the Stonewall Uprising, and she was a fixture of gay life in Greenwich Village, where she was known as the mayor of Christopher Street. Nella Larson, a writer, became a star of the Harlem Renaissance with her novels Quicksand and Passing. Forgotten for years, she was rediscovered in the late 20th century and is now taught in literature classes across the country. Emily Warren Roebling oversaw the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. After her husband, and the bridge's chief engineer, fell ill, she taught herself engineering and took over his duties. What is definitively known about Mary Ewing Outerbridge is that she set up the nation's first tennis courts on Staten Island. What we think we know about Ms. Outerbridge is that she played the first game of tennis in the United States, against her sister Laura. What is still unknown is who, exactly, won that match. The overlooked project will continue to add overdue obituaries to the Times's pages each week. But New York has more extraordinary women in its history than could fit into a newspaper. Some of them will be featured on Link NYC kiosks this month, including Mabel Lee, a jazz tap dancer and singer, Sarah J. S. Tompkins Garnet, the first African American female principal of a New York public school, and Verena Morton Jones the first woman licensed to practice medicine in Mississippi. And to learn about women who wielded political influence in the city, visit the exhibition Beyond Suffrage, a century of New York women in politics at the Museum of the City of New York. Here's what else is happening today will be mediocre at best. It's going to be a cold and cloudy Monday, with a high around 40. There's a chance of rain this afternoon, but we're likely to get snow overnight. A winter weather advisory goes into effect at 8 p.m., 2 to 4 inches of snow are expected, and Tuesday's commute could be slippery. Keep springing forward a commuter helicopter crashed into the East River on Sunday, killing at least two of the people on board. New York Times' Ronald L. Rice a Democrat representing Newark in the New Jersey Senate, believes efforts to legalize marijuana would create more problems than it would solve in black neighborhoods, a stance at odds with his party. New York Times Two New York Assembly women have written a letter professing solidarity with women who have been victims of sexual assault. New York Times about 500 students from the five boroughs gathered to give history-themed performances at the annual New York City History Day competition. New York Times jurors in the corruption trial of Joseph Percoco, a former top aide to Gov. Andrew M. Cuomo, appear to have resumed their deliberations, despite declaring deadlock last week. New York Times a peek at Lalo's Barber Shop, where Bushwick residents have been going to get a haircut, 
relax and chat for 40 years. Bushwick Daily and Upstate County claims New York City is dumping homeless people in their community. WTEN a series of conversations about segregation in the city and how it impacts residents' access to opportunities get started this summer. AM New York Today's Metropolitan Diary, fourth car from the back for a global look at what's happening, see your morning briefing The Unseen Oceans exhibition opens at the American Museum of Natural History on the Upper West Side. Times vary. $23 a march for safe streets, organized after two children were killed at a Brooklyn intersection last week, begins at 9th Street and Prospect Park West at 6 p.m. Free Everything is Hallucinated, in which a science lecture meets a comedy show to explore how reality is not always what it seems, at Caveat on the Lower East Side. 7 p.m. $15 Mothers of the Movements, a series celebrating black female pioneers in the civil rights and black arts movements, at the National Black Theater in Harlem. 7.30 p.m. $15 Suggested Donation in Your Face New York, a musical, comedy and spoken word show with prominent actors, writers, and musicians at Merkin Concert Hall on the Upper West Side. 7.30 p.m. Tickets start at $25 Rangers host Hurricanes, 7 p.m. Message, dot alternate side parking remains in effect until March 29 for more events, see the New York Times's Arts and Entertainment Guide. Point one woman who won't be featured in the Overlook series is Juliet Gordon Lowe, as she was the subject of a Times obituary albeit a short one at the time of her death. Ms. Lowe, who founded the Girl Scouts of America on this day in 1912, was from Georgia, but her activism made waves and continues to do so in New York and around the world. The city's first troop was established in Manhattan in 1913. The other boroughs founded troops a few years later. When women won the right to vote in 1920, local Girl Scouts, despite being too young to cast ballots, helped work the polls across New York. Soon after, during the Great Depression, the group held its inaugural citywide cookie sale. And today, a century later, Nearly 28,000 young female leaders in New York continue their training in business ethics, environmental conservation, scientific research, and more. Ms. Lowe now figures in a debate to wipe the name of former Gov. Eugene Talmadge of Georgia, a segregationist with white supremacist views, off a bridge in Savannah. Girl Scouts there are rallying to replace his name with Ms. Lowe's. New York Today is a morning roundup that is published weekdays at 6 a.m. If you don't get it in your inbox already, you can sign up to receive it by email here. For updates throughout the day, like us on Facebook. What would you like to see here to start your day? Post a comment, email us at New York Today at New York or reach us via Twitter using hashtag NYToday. Follow the New York Today columnists, Alexandra Levine and Jonathan Wolf. On Twitter. You can find the latest New York Today at NewYorkToday.com.